This is video number nine of the theory of the firm series. In this video, I'm going to focus more on revenues. Now remember, this is in the high level only uh, section of the IB economics, microeconomics syllabus. In this video, I'm going to explain the concepts of total revenue, average revenue and marginal revenue. So let's start by taking a look at the concept of total revenue. Basically, total revenue is the total amount of money that the firm receives from selling a certain amount of a good or service in a given time period. So the total amount of money that the firm receives for selling its output. It's calculated by multiplying price and quantity. Let's have a look at the concept of average revenue. Average revenue, on the other hand, is the revenue that a firm receives per unit of its sales. So it's the revenue it receives um, on average per unit of its sales. To calculate average revenue, you basically divide total revenue by quantity, which would give us the price. So average, average revenue is actually the price. Marginal revenue, on the other hand, is the extra revenue a firm gains from selling an extra unit of output in a given time period. It is calculated by dividing the change in total revenue by the change in quantity. Another learning outcome you are required to demonstrate is to be able to draw these revenue curves um, and their relationship with output. Now that will depend on the relationship between price and quantity. Um, when we will have a look at two different cases. How to draw the revenue curves when price does not change with quantity. That means the elasticity of demand is infinite. So when price, elasticity of demand equals infinity. This is the first case. The second case is how to draw revenue when price falls as output increases. So on a regular downward sloping demand curve. That, is, that means that price elasticity falls as output increases. Let's have a look at each case. So how do we draw the revenue curves when price does not change with output? This means that price elasticity of demand is infinite, it's equal to infinity. Well, basically the demand curve will be a straight horizontal line. Regardless of the output being produced, the price will not change. Remember, this is what a perfectly elastic demand curve looks like. As a result, the total revenue curve will be a straight line from the origin. If you plot a graph showing the relationship between total revenue measured in dollars and output measured in units, it will be a straight line from the origin. As you produce and you sell more output, your total revenue will also increase. Now things um, are a little bit different when we plot the revenue curves in the case of price falling as output increases. So this is in the case of a regular downward sloping demand curve. We know on a regular downward sloping demand curve, the top part of the demand curve, uh, price elasticity of demand is quite high, at higher prices, demand is quite price elastic. And as you go down the demand curve, the price elasticity of demand falls, it becomes more inelastic or less elastic. So let's first take a look at this example. Here, as you can see, are the levels of output from one unit all the way up to eight units and the price per unit. The price will decrease as you produce more because this is a regular downward sloping demand curve. So just multiply price by quantity to give you the total revenue. So one times 50 equals 50, two times 45 equals 90, seven times 20 equals 140 and so on. Average revenue is basically total revenue divided by quantity, which is actually the price. So the average revenue and the price will be exactly the same. Marginal revenue is the change in total revenue over the change in quantity. So here, total revenue changed from 50 to 90, and the quantity changed from 1 to 2. So 90 minus 50 divided by 2 minus 1 gives you 40. Here, you've got 150 minus 140 divided by 5 minus 4 gives you 10, okay? Um, you're also given the total cost curves, and from that you can calculate the marginal cost, which is the change in total cost divided by the change in output. Now, you can see here, 
Total revenue increases, but it doesn't keep increasing forever. Eventually, it reaches a maximum and then it starts to decrease. Marginal revenue is always decreasing. So it starts at 40 and it keeps decreasing all the way to negative 20. Average revenue is always decreasing as well because it is the demand curve, basically. This example was taken from the May 2013 Paper 3 um, exam paper published by the IB. So if you plot these numbers we just saw as a relationship between price and revenue on the uh, vertical axis, so here you've got price and revenue in dollars, and here you've got the output in units, the total revenue curve will look something like this. It will be a curve that will increase and keep increasing until it reaches a maximum and then it will start to decrease. So this is the total revenue curve right here. Okay, uh, The average revenue curve will be the regular demand curve because again it's a relationship. We said that average revenue is price in that case and the relationship between price and quantity on a downward sloping demand curve is the demand curve itself. Now, marginal revenue is quite interesting. Marginal revenue starts off from the same point as average revenue, but it intersects the horizontal axis at the point where total revenue reaches its maximum. So when total revenue is maximized, marginal revenue is zero. When total revenue starts to decrease, marginal revenue is now negative. So... After you reach the maximum total revenue, this is where the marginal revenue curve intersects the horizontal axis. Before that point, marginal revenue is positive. After that point, marginal revenue is negative. So why is the relationship between total revenue and marginal revenue as such? Well, it comes down to price elasticity of demand. If you'll remember back when we did price elasticity of demand, we know that a demand curve, a regular downward sloping demand curve, doesn't have a constant elasticity. We know that at higher prices, so the top part of the demand curve, price elasticity of demand is greater than 1 and demand is elastic. At lower prices, price elasticity of demand is less than 1 and the demand is price inelastic. And at the midpoint, price elasticity of demand is equal to 1 or demand is unit elastic. So. When price elasticity of demand is greater than 1, that is to say, when demand is elastic, total revenue will increase as more output is being produced and sold. Okay, so a fall in price will actually cause an increase in total revenue. And the opposite is true. When demand is price inelastic, any increase in uh, sales and lowering in price will actually cause total revenue to fall. When demand is unit elastic at the very center of the demand curve, total revenue is maximized. Now, since marginal revenue is the slope of the total revenue curve, you can see that when demand is elastic, marginal revenue is positive. That means the more you sell, the more your revenue increases. When demand is inelastic, price elasticity of demand is inelastic, marginal revenue is negative. So this explains why the total revenue curve is shaped as such and why the average and marginal revenue curves are shaped as such. So to sum up, when price elasticity of demand is greater than 1, which means when demand is elastic, marginal revenue is positive and total revenue is increasing as more output is being sold. When price elasticity of demand is less than 1, this is to say demand is inelastic, margin revenue is negative, and total revenue is decreasing as more output is being sold. Total revenue is maximized when marginal revenue equals 0, which happens when price elasticity of demand is equal to 1. And this is at the maximum point here.